long as ships are made of steel and go to sea, corrosion will exist, and therefore to maintain ships in good condition, it will be essential to plan and fight against corrosion. The experience of the skill and technology involved in the maintenance work against corrosion has been handed down from generation to generation. However, in the present day shipping, because of a change of crew allocation and a rapid generational shift, the traditional techniques are being lost, so there is virtually no handover of techniques to the present generation. Hence, there is a large demand to arrange for this knowledge and technology to be passed on to our present and next generations. This DVD is aiming to reaffirm the technology for conducting the best maintenance work and to introduce practical methods of chipping and painting as basic skills to prevent corrosion. Iron begins to corrode when it comes into contact with water or moisture. Corrosion basically means iron disintegrates in contact with water or moisture. The phenomenon of iron corrosion is attributed to iron as a conductor of electricity and dissolved oxygen from air being absorbed into water. Basically, corrosion is generated by ionization of iron. The result of corrosion when iron dissolves in the process of ionization is called rust. The steel parts of ships are washed with seawater that contains dissolved oxygen in appreciable quantities. Furthermore, dry salt attached to the hull absorbs water and as a result, the formation of rust progresses further. The formation of rust on an iron object causes its volume to increase to more than double its size. Subsequently, the rust flakes start to peel and fall off the object. As iron changes to rust, the thickness of a steel plate will reduce. It is said that without preventative measures, the thickness would reduce by about a half in five years. Both steel plates and painted surfaces of the whole face are exposed to the severe elements of the environment, such as wind, rain, and especially seawater. If there is no corrective maintenance done, the formation of rust sets in almost immediately. Hull above the water line is exposed to the splash of seawater, while the underwater part is continuously submerged in seawater. Furthermore, the interiors of tanks, such as ballast tanks, are always subjected to an environment of air, moisture, and water. In reference to the ship's steel structure on decks, the coating on the undersides of pipes or sliding parts, etc., are easily chaffed off while sliding in contact with each other. The chaffed parts are often exposed to an environment of air, moisture, and water. The formation of rust progresses at the rate of about 0.1 millimeter per year in urban areas on land, but it is about four times that when exposed to seawater spray. The basics of rust prevention require to block out water and oxygen from the ship's steel. As we know, water and oxygen are the two main factors that cause rust. This means it is the basics of the maintenance work to first remove salt and dirt which absorb water, and then block out air and water from the surface of iron by painting. We show you here a real maintenance workflow. At first, we remove any rust and then paint the de-rusted base material. 
The surface preparation is carried out by the removal of rust by chipping, followed by grinding to smoothen the surface for a uniform spread and good adhesion of paint. And finally, removing the dirt and debris. Once the surface is ready, the first coat of primer is applied. Once the applied priming coat dries and settles with a good adhesion to iron surface. A top coat is applied over it to produce a lasting durability and a beautiful appearance. Now we shall describe each process in detail. At first, we shall describe the process of the removal of rust. This begins with the removal of rust by chipping. Followed by the surface preparation of the base material, which is done by polishing the iron surface with a mechanical grinder. The removal of rust and the subsequent polishing of the iron surface greatly improves and benefits the adhesion of paint to the iron surface. Generally, such a method of surface preparation doubles the adhesive power of paint to the surface of iron. In addition, good polishing increases the surface contact of paint, thus giving it a good adhesion and anchoring on the iron surface. You should clean and remove oil content, water, and iron powder afterwards. Before you begin any chipping and scraping work on a deck, you should wear appropriate working clothes, such as a safety helmet, face mask, earplugs, protective goggles, working gloves, gaiters and safety boots. The protection of eyes in particular is essential and important. You must realize that iron powder and dust can enter at the gap of safety glasses or regular dark glasses. Therefore, you should use well-fitting encapsulated type safety goggles. Long-sleeved working clothes made of cotton are to be used as they guard against static electricity. However, you should pay close attention not to have the long sleeves get caught in the moving parts of grinders and chipping machines. When it is necessary to work aloft or at any high place, you should always use a safety harness and or a safety belt. In addition, you should assess the work environments beforehand and exercise the necessary precautions as may be needed. For example, when working in an enclosed space, it is vital to comply with enclosed space entry requirements and have good forced ventilation in place. Chipping may generate sparks. Therefore, before chipping, you should take precautions for fire prevention and ensure preparedness for firefighting as required. You should use tools appropriate and suitable to the degree and range of the rust at the work site. A guide for work load per day is 6.5 square meters by manual work and 13 square meters by using power tools. An angle grinder and a cup wire brush or a bevel brush are used for the removal of surface rust and polishing the iron surface. A needle scaler is used for thick layers of rust which are found scattered on a site and for rust found on uneven surfaces. A needle scaler is also well suited for chipping rust from U-bolts and parts of an L-shape or other similar structures. A scaling hammer is used for extensive thick rust and the old rust which has become firm. A warning about these power tools is necessary because of their very high decibel level of sound and vibration. 
as these factors influence the human body, you should aim to work in around 15 minute intervals while taking appropriate rest. A hand wire brush or a scraper is used to remove small rust manually. These tools are suited to remove the remaining rust after chipping. A scraper is also suitable for removing peeling paint and for handrails and stanchions. After de-rusting to bare metal, all iron dust and other fringe detritus should be swept clean. After wiping, clean with dry waste rags. A coat of paint should be applied for rust prevention. There is another faster way to clear the iron dust by air blow, but care should be taken not to generate rust stains elsewhere.